When you are face to face with a difficulty, you are up against a discovery. Lord Kelvin. And so leading on that, how today I want to cover a uh, order of magnitude estimates of the amount of energy, or as we'll see, temperature, in order to do some, something useful. So heat capacity, what is it? So materials can store and release thermal energy. Uh, and how much energy they can store or release is known as the heat capacity. So the image here is molten salt. And molten salt is used, for example, in um, some solar energy converters. Uh, so they take the solar energy in and they focus that solar energy. And then what they do with that solar energy is they melt salt. And salt, as we'll see, has an interesting heat capacity. And you store that molten salt, and then from there you can use it to, for example, boil water at night to drive a turbine and thus generate energy effectively from solar heating during the night when the sun is not up. Uh, and so it relies critically on this quantity known as the heat capacity, how much thermal energy material can store and release. <clears throat> So how much thermal energy a material can store depends on how much material there is, how much mass is there, uh, and the temperature. And so the formula relating energy, heat capacity, mass, and temperature is given in the next line on uh, the slide. So the energy is equal to the heat capacity times the mass times the temperature. Or in symbols, E is equal to C times M times T. So E is the energy. C is sort of the universal symbol, large capital C is sort of the large um, uh, standard notation for the heat capacity. M is a measure of the mass and T is the temperature. So a heat capacity uh, has units of joules per unit mass per temperature. So if we want to work in grams uh, in the Celsius scale, then unit wise, the formula looks like it does there uh, at the last line of the slide. So how many joules <clears throat> is equal to a joule per gram times centigrade, so that's in the denominator, times a gram times a centigrade. So you can see that the two grams, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, cancel, and also the centigrade. Uh, one is in the denominator, one is in the numerator, those cancel, and so you end up with a joule equal a joule, and so the units work out just right. So a heat capacity has a unit of a joule, an energy per gram per centigrade, and energy per mass per unit temperature. Now commonly, <clears throat> we are most interested in is the change in temperature needed to change the thermal energy for a fixed mass. So for example, I want to boil a cup of water. So I'm not so interested necessarily in what the actual energy or temperature of uh, uh, the substance is, but I want to know how much energy I need to pump in, how much I need to raise the temperature in order to change the state of that material. So the formula is exactly the same, uh, except we talk about changes in energy is equal to the heat capacity times the mass times the change in the temperature. Or in symbols, it's pretty much just like the formula we just saw, the change in energy is equal to the heat capacity times M times the change in the temperature. Okay, so that's the fundamental formula. You will see that on our um, useful numbers and handy formula uh, sheet that is in the class. And so let's take a look at what some of the heat capacities of different materials are. So water has uh, an amazing heat capacity of about four joules per gram per degree centigrade. This is much higher than other substances, and it makes water exceptionally good at regulating temperature. This is super important if um, for biology uh, so that your cells do not respond immediately to a temperature because that temperature change, that energy change, is soaked up by the water in your cell, and so it acts um, to buffer temperature changes. We see this every day uh, in everyday life too with regard to the oceans, right? Earth is three quarters uh, ocean, and so it has a very large heat capacity. 
And so land, while it heats up very quickly and very slowly, water takes a much longer time to heat up and slow down. And so you get the, sort of this thermal inertia effect from uh, the oceans, which regulates pretty much the global temperatures. Okay, so some of materials and their heat capacities. So metals, you know, things like gold, mercury, copper, iron, uh, as shown in the table there, these things have heat capacities of a few tenths. Order of magnitude estimate about a tenth of a joule per gram per degree centigrade. Other interesting things like salt, which we just saw as an example of solar heater, has a higher um, heat capacity. So salt, aluminum, air, these things all have heat capacities of about one, about one joule per gram per degree C. So if I want to change uh, the energy by one joule, I need to raise the temperature of one gram by one centigrade. Ice has a larger heat capacity of about two joule per gram per centigrade. And water has an outstanding about four, 4.2 um, joules per gram per centigrade. So how do we use this in an order of magnitude estimate, which you might find useful in the module tool, module two um, assignment and some of the other ones that will come up in the class. Okay, so how much energy is needed to boil a cup of water? We talked, we brought this up as an example earlier, so let's do it. So roughly how much energy is needed to boil a cup of water? Well, we write down our formula. So delta E, the change in energy, is the heat capacity C times the mass M times the change in temperature delta T. And so now we start hunting around or estimating values for the various quantities on the right-hand side of this equation. So we know the heat capacity. This is about four. Uh, joules per gram per degree C. We talked about this. It's also on the um, useful numbers and handy formula sheet. So a cup, uh, a cup of water. So a cup of water is half a pint. There are two cups in every pint uh, and uh, there are two pints in every quart. So one cup is half a pint is a quarter of a quart. A quart is about a liter. So we have, oops, sorry about that. My bad. Uh, so a quart is about a quarter of a liter. Uh, water has a density of about one gram uh, per cubic centimeter, which is a liter. And so one cup has a mass of about 250 grams. So that now we have the mass. So the mass of a cup of water is about 250 grams. Uh, then we want to boil the water. And so let's assume we're going to go from room temperature, which is about 20 degrees C, to boiling water, which by definition is 100 degrees C. So this is a change in temperature of about 80 degrees C. And so the change of energy, how much energy we need to input into the system in order to boil water, uh, is about 4 times 250 times 80. So 4 times 250 is 1,000. 1,000 times 80 is 80,000. And so 80,000 joules. And so to put that in perspective a little bit, that is about the energy equivalent of a good slice of bacon is what it takes. So um, the energy of one slice of bacon is what it takes to boil a cup of water. Okay, that's what I wanted to say for today. And thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.